Uh, dear friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, greetings from uh, the University of Arizona in Tucson, Arizona. I uh, have to admit I am extremely disappointed that I am not with you there physically, and I don't think so that ever happened to me in my life that I started an trip but could not complete. Unfortunately, nowadays we rely so much on technology uh, to the point that we no longer know how to do anything without technology. And as a reason, uh, because of the major technical fiasco at the Indian uh, consulate in New York, uh, I was unable to obtain the visa, uh, although they had issued to me, uh, and they worked very hard to do for which to, to get that, for which I'm very grateful. Uh, nonetheless, um, the fact is that I'm in Tucson, back in Tucson, after three days of uh, back and forth to New York, and I'm, I am, uh, again, very sorry I'm not there with you. I would like to share um, uh, an experience that the International Virtual League Hospital Foundation uh, and our group has uh, gained over the next last 15 years, uh, where we now have 45 hospitals that are fully integrated in a telemedicine and e-health program uh, with the uh, health system of their countries. I would like to uh, acknowledge all my uh, partners uh, in this, in particular Dr. Merrill uh, and the rest of the team who worked very tirelessly to have this uh, done. Some of you may have seen this before, but uh, I have to start with, again, uh, the um, in order for us to create a modern and efficient medical healthcare system that will prevent morbidity and mortality and improve lives, lives, we really need to bring together a new coalition of partners with innovative boundaries and clear vision. And I think this group uh, present today is the best example of such uh, clear vision and innovative boundaries. This will make possible that we change the delivery of existing medical care and provide real uh, good care for our patients. The International Virtual e Hospital Foundation, as a non-for-profit organization, has the following uh, approach. And um, we uh, strive to build the cap uh, capacity, the network development and deployment of equipment, implementation of clinical uh, of program components, such as clinical telemedicine, uh, virtual education program, and establishment and use of electronic library, as well as research and development. On the on upper screen, you see Dr. Fatas Aldashi, a neurosurgeon uh, in Albania, who has now, uh, just in the last 18 months, uh, close to 150 cases that he had managed over the telemedicine network in Albania. We started uh, in Kosovo a few years ago, and uh, we built the network, uh, we built the program, and we learned quite a bit from it, uh, as you have seen this in the past. Since then, we've been working tirelessly uh, and learned few things. One of the most important things is probably going to be on this page, uh, on this slide, uh, is our strategy uh, that we have created. We call it Initiate, Build, Operate, and Transfer. And I'm going to take a couple of minutes to go through this because I think it's really uh, crucially important. The Initiate phase is basically we perform a needs assessment. We identify the most important medical and educational problems in the country or in the region. Identify local champions, this is a key. And I know it's very difficult to identify another Ganapati, but you really have to in order for this program to continue. Solicit input from all local and international stakeholders and create a true partnership with local stakeholders, especially with the government. Now, not every government in the world we like. However, as bad as they may be, we have to work with them in order to, to make sustainable the telemedicine program in the country. The next phase is uh, uh, create the, net, the network, build a telemedicine center with all necessary space for an electronic resources and educational activities, establish the electronic medical library, and empower local personnel to independently run the program. When I mean empower, I don't mean them just to give them license to do that. I mean to teach them, 
to train them, to educate them, and to make them true leaders. That is really the empowerment in my, in my books. The operate phase is uh, a very important one. Ensure function functionality and leadership of the program, add clinical and other educational center content, report results in peer review journals, world has to know what you're doing, ensure good public relations and transparency, and improve through continuous feedback and new evidence. And uh, finally, uh, the programs need to be transferred to the government or to someone else who's going to take over the program uh, in a sustainable fashion. And this needs to be ensured that the telemedicine program has become an institution of the country and ensure sustainability of financial support of local ownership. I can tell you that here in the University of Arizona, we actually lost one very good program we had in the past uh, because we did not plan appropriately. Uh, we did not plan for long-term uh, financial uh, support, and thus we had lost one, at least one very good program. You can find this uh, in this article uh, that now has been published uh, about um, eight years ago, uh, I'm sorry, six years ago, in 2009, and uh, the details are there. This is the uh, telemedicine program of Kosovo. I will not gonna talk too much about it. Uh, and this is in Albania. Now in Albania, actually, we have um, 28 uh, hospitals that are covering uh, the entire country uh, from north to south, north to south here, and uh, west uh, here should be Italy, and Macedonia is on the east, and Kosovo is in the east, obviously. So it was natural for us to have this. In Tirana itself, this is the capital of Albania, you all know that, we have all the uh, tertiary hospitals connected uh, to the center. And uh, our third program is uh, in Cabo Verde in Africa. Uh, that is a, uh, our really one of the, uh, again, uh, excellent uh, program. Uh, this is a program that is expanded in 10 islands, and no, I'm sorry, nine islands of um, uh, Cabo Verde. You may know this as the Cape Verde. Uh, in, and in 10 hospitals. So uh, on a personal level, this has become a dream come true uh, project for me, and I'm uh, really uh, grateful that this uh, came to it. Let me just take you quickly through the initiation. You have a bunch of seminars, uh, as you can see here. On the first one, uh, I think Dr. Uh, Ganapati is right here after um, Dr. Rodas, uh, who is no longer with us, Minister Rodas from Ecuador, and Dr. Ganapati here, this is his first visit in 2002 in, uh, in Pristina in, in, uh, in Kosovo. And then the, the last conference we had, this was in, uh, uh, in Praia, uh, Cabo Verde. As, uh, what, I, what I'm saying is that we actually have conferences only when we initiate the program uh, on the country. And eventually in Kosovo became, uh, the, we built the program. Uh, you, you, you saw this, some of this, you have been present there. Uh, then we built the program in Albania, again, uh, from uh, rebuilding the buildings in cooperation with the um, uh, United States Army Corps of Engineers and, and UCOM, uh, or a European Command of uh, US Military, uh, and USAID. So this is uh, um, just, again, uh, rebuilding the program in Albania. As you can see, there are all the regional hospitals. Um, uh, Tele-nursing has become one of our biggest uh, programs that we have. Uh, we have telestroke, uh, we have teletrauma, uh, we have uh, basically a lot of uh, components as well. Uh, we have gone through phases again uh, to, to install the telemedicine uh, equipment, and not just equipment, but to ensure that we do this uh, right. This is uh, just a, a topology of our program, uh, and basically is run by some of the most outstanding engineers in, in, the, in the field. Uh, hardware, uh, as important as it is, is really more important the um, policies and procedures in place uh, to make this happen, but obviously you cannot do without hardware. All regional telemedicine centers have the same thing uh, as the main uh, telemedicine center has, uh, and obviously we have, we have went down to municipality hospitals um, where we have the equipment uh, present. Furthermore, we have gone down to uh, what we call local terminals, 
uh, the neurosurgery. Uh, and again, here is down uh, Dr. Fatah Soldashi using a tablet to answer for telestroke and for tele, uh, neurosurgery trauma. Uh, telemedicine cards, uh, you can use any, anything you want. I, we are done, not really tied to one or the other. Uh, they can do the, they do the same thing, every one of them. Uh, you can organize very, various ad hoc uh, events, uh, live surgery, uh, conferences uh, outside telemedicine national centers uh, such as Telestroke and, and so on and so forth. You have to have these buildings really built. Uh, as, as you know, in these countries such as Albania, uh, these were the buildings before and after. And I get, I, as I mentioned, we re were able to rebuild these uh, before. The telemedicine in, uh, um, uh, in Cabo Verde was uh, uh, supported uh, by um, uh, European Union and the Slovenian government. This is the Minister of Health of uh, Cabo Verde. And again, this is just a cartoon of the islands uh, mentioned there. You have to have uh, support from the highest levels of the country. And this is uh, Prime Minister Berisha, former Bar Minister Berisha now, and uh, His Excellency Jose Maria Pereira Neves, which is uh, Prime Minister of Cabo Verde, visiting the telemedicine center. And Dr. Avanda Azevedo, who is a cardiologist who runs the program in uh, Cabo Verde. Uh, f we did pretty good overall. Uh, we have received the uh, Balkans, uh, um, uh, received the 21st Century Achievement Award by a Computer World uh, Program, Honors Program. And uh, uh, most recently, actually, the uh, American College of Surgeons uh, has. Uh, made this program as one of the International uh, uh, Surgical Volunteerism Award uh, winners. So what do we think in the future? Uh, we believe that uh, our program uh, has the process in place, uh, initiative be, uh, initiative uh, um, implementing telemedicine initiative beyond the Balkans into South uh, Europe, and Middle East, Africa, and South America based on what we have done so far. Um, <clears throat> I have to uh, just uh, say this, uh, uh, the telemedicine program just started our desperation in, back in Kosovo, and I picked this country to launch the program because I knew the country the best. But for, from the beginning, the concept of the International Virtual e Hospital was not meant only for this country. The concept is bigger than any one country, and now this program is being implemented in many countries around the world, and we are looking forward to expanding in other countries. So finally, I would uh, love to um, express my gratitude uh, toward the telemedicine team uh, and organizing team of, the, uh, uh, of this conference for doing everything they could uh, to get me there, although we started the process quite late with visa, and that's probably entirely my uh, problem, uh, for allowing me to be part of this conference. And I wish uh, you guys the most of the success and hopefully uh, path the way to really do a transition of the medical care uh, the way we do it now into a modern and assisted by technology. Thank you and good luck. <laughs>